In this lesson, I'm going to show you how you can highlight the minimum and the maximum value in a chart by using some creative formatting. So before we dive into this lesson, let's take a look at an example of the end result so we can see what we're aiming for. So if you take a look at the screen, I have a line chart that's currently displaying the data in the table on the left. Now notice with this line chart, we have two markers, two points on the chart that are different colors to everything else. These also have data labels. Now these two are the minimum and the maximum values in my data set. So I can see very quickly at a glance that we had the highest sales in May and the lowest sales in June. And if my data changes, this is completely dynamic and it will update. So if I go to the sales column for September and change this to 5,000, which effectively makes it the largest number, when I hit enter, notice the chart updates and it moves across to September for that maximum value. So how can we achieve this effect in Excel? Well, stay tuned because I'm going to tell you. So let's start out right from the beginning with our very basic data set. We have our months of the year running down in column B, and then we have our sales figures in column C. So the first thing we're going to do here is create our line chart. Let's click in the data set up to the insert ribbon. And in the charts group, we're going to choose a chart with markers. Now, it doesn't really matter too much if you choose markers, because when we apply the chart style, it's going to remove those markers anyway. Now, you don't necessarily have to use the same chart style that I'm using but I think this looks pretty cool, so we might as well give it a whirl. So in the chart styles box, I'm gonna choose this dark chart style just here. And let's double click and just give this a quick heading. Now, the first thing I want to do here is I want to add some markers on each of these points. So let's click on the line, control one to pull up our format data series menu. So if we click on the little bucket and go to the marker section, and marker options, you can see currently I don't have any markers. I'm going to change this to automatic. And if I wanted these to be a completely different color to the line, I could do that by changing the fill color. Now, for the moment, I'm not going to do that, but I am going to say that I don't want a border. So I'm going to switch that to no line. So that is what our chart looks like currently, fairly standard. Now, what I want to do is I want to change it so that the markers are bigger in a different color and have a data label where we have the minimum and maximum values. So the next step of this is to add our minimum and maximum values into our data set. So let's create two columns for min and max, and just because let's apply the same formatting. So in column D, I need to create a formula that's going to help me look in the sales column and only return a number where it finds the minimum sales. So just a quick look down here, I think this one is gonna be minimum. So I basically want a formula that's going to return 1160 in this cell and nothing in any of the other cells. And we can do this using if. So let's say equals if, our logical test is if the sales value is equal to the min of this range just here. And we're going to press F4 to lock that in place. Once we close off our min, we're now back into our if formula. So if it's true, if C4 is the minimum value in that range, we want it to return the number in the cell. So if true, return the value. If it's false, return nothing. Close the bracket, hit enter, and what we should find when we copy it down is that the only value it's going to return is the minimum value that it finds. Now let's do the same for max. Now just to save a bit of time, I'm going to copy this formula across because it is very similar. So we need to change the cell reference here to C4 and also this one here to C4. And we want to do a max instead of a min. So when we copy this one down, this is only going to produce a number where it finds the maximum value and we have nothing in the other cells. So now that we have this information, we need to pull it into our chart. So let's click on the chart. Notice that the data that's currently showing in the chart is highlighted in the table. So to include our two new columns, we simply need to drag this selection across, let go, and we get something that looks really bizarre. 
And that is because Excel treats these blank cells as a zero value. So it's plotting the line along zero until it gets to that minimum value or that maximum value, and then it's shooting up. So how can we get around this? Well, let's go back to our min formula. What I'm going to do is instead of outputting a blank cell when it's not the minimum value, we're going to add an error effectively into here. So I'm going to type NA, open bracket, close bracket, hit enter. So now when I copy this down, I get NA. Let's do the same here and hit enter. And when I copy this down, check out the effect that that has on our chart. It's now doing exactly what I want it to do, which is highlighting the minimum and maximum points in different colors. It's then simply a case of formatting these. So I'm going to select the first point, control one. Let's go to our marker. I'm going to use a built in marker, the circle, and let's make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to change the fill color. Let's just make that so it really stands out. Let's make it bright red border, no line. I could carry on going. I'm going to leave it there. Let's do exactly the same for the other marker. Let's select it. Let's go to our marker options built in. We're going to choose the circle. And we're going to take that up to seven as well. Let's give it a solid fill. And this one is going to be blue. There we go. The final little thing to do here is to add data labels. So I can right click and add data label. And let's do the same for this one. And if I don't like them to be on the side, I could add them above or below. I think I'm going to leave them on the side. They look pretty good. Now, the cool thing about this is that everything is completely dynamic. So if the sales data changes for whatever reason, and a different month becomes the minimum or the maximum sales value, this is all going to update. So let's change February to let's make this 5000. You can see that that chart updates and we're now seeing February. Let's take November down to 1000. And you can see everything updates and our chart looks really cool. Now, you don't necessarily have to use month, months of the year here. You could use other data. And if you want to make sure that this is completely dynamic, so if you start adding new rows in the bottom, I probably wouldn't because there's no more months of the year. Just remember, you can put this data into a table. Control T. Yes, my table has headers, and it just ensures that if you add anything else onto the bottom, the chart is going to automatically update. If you like this video, then smash that like button, give me a little follow, and I will see you in the next one.